Actually, you saw people standing on deck and watching us, uh, which was more or less like a friendly meeting somewhere in the ocean. This, then, is the German account. Not everyone, however, believes their story. To begin with, just why did the Sydney come so close? Was Burnett duped, or did he have other factors to consider? It was known from previous actions in 1941 that uh, British and Allied sailors had been killed when raiders had been sunk. Captain uh, Burnett really had no choice but to come towards the ship. Uh, given that uh, Cormoran was fumbling the signal flags and making some show of her uh, attempts to reply to uh, Sydney's request for her international signal letters, I believe that Sydney came close and that in the end he decided to board the ship. Absolute crap and delusion. I know the men on the ship. He didn't identify the radar at all. Absolute rubbish. I know the man who hoisted the ruddy signal. The Germans aren't lying to me. There's one joke to me, 120 of us couldn't tell you the same story. That's drivel. We clearly could uh, see people uh, just standing on the railing. The suggestion that Captain Burnett was uh, incompetent or that uh, he was somehow a bleeding heart and wasn't up to the rigours of war really is something that I do not accept. I've only heard these sorts of allegations uttered by one person and I don't accept them. Uh, as a minor in itself, but major in its significance, indication that Sydney was not at action stations, was Detmer's comment that the cooks were standing around in their white uniforms looking at us. Uh, I saw a few which probably were kitchen hands or something like that. They were reading an uh, apron, one or two of them. So uh, <clears throat> I think myself they probably were working in the kitchen and just had a look and see what kind of ship it was. Well, Captain Detmer's suggestion that there were cooks and stewards and all sorts of people wandering about the upper deck of Sydney uh, enjoying the sights of seeing another merchant ship that afternoon, in my mind, uh, are so implausible as to suggest some major doubts about the reconstruction of the action uh, as supplied by Captain Detmers. It seems to me that uh, she was flying the Dutch flag, uh, that Sydney had come close in preparation for boarding, and that uh, Captain Detmers fired a torpedo from the starboard underwater tube. While that torpedo was on its way to Sydney, he then gave the order to decamouflage and then fired. By firing a, a torpedo while flying the Dutch flag was prima facie a war crime. It was a breach of the, of the Hague Conventions, which said that if you were to fire on an enemy, it had to be under your own flag. Now, th there are rumours that uh, Detmers fired a torpedo at Sydney while still sailing under the Dutch flag and thereby committed a war crime. That is the product of ignorance, delusion, and stupidity. You cannot fire an uh, underwater torpedo in our ship with a ship moving. It's not possible. You must stop your ship, and then you can shoot the underwater torpedo. It was not shot. The under to underwater torpedo was not fired, no, never. I decided very early in my research not to interview the Cormoran survivors. I did that consciously because I believe you really couldn't put great store on recollections which were more than 50 years old. You've got to go to Germany to find out. You've got to speak to the men. Whether the Germans have lied all these years or not,